My name is Bobby Mann and I'm the Public Relations Coordinator for the Front Street Animal Shelter. When I was at school one day, I actually walked across the street to go get a sandwich and I saw a guy with a puppy in a box and it really engaged my interest. So I walked over and I asked the gentleman, I said, hey, what are you doing with that dog? And he told me, well, I'm either going to sell it or I'm going to throw it out by the river. And of course, you know, although I wasn't a huge animal lover, I was compassionate toward that animal. And so little did I know, I went to the store for a sandwich and I came back with a puppy. So I walked back to school. Uh, and I received a lot of attention, of course, right? So, you know, at, at the Academy of Design, it's a fashion institute, it's primarily females. So uh, I not only came home with a puppy, I came home with about 15 different date offers, which was exciting for me. And I thought, you know what? I think I can get used to this. I think I'm going to invest a little energy into this dog. So I went to a local vet to get some vaccines done. And uh, I walk in, you know, the vet slaps my dog on the butt, gives him two vaccines, and I walk out with a $100 bill. That's expensive. And I knew that, uh, my pet was going to take a lot more resources than that uh, and there's no way it would be feasible to me as a student to be able to care for a pet without being crafty. So I thought, hey, uh, I already got a new pet. I'm kind of invested in animals. Uh, let me try volunteering. So I turned in an application. Uh, they called me about two weeks later for an interview and I said, wow, that's really interesting. The shelter is interviewing people to be volunteers and I had never volunteered at a shelter so I just thought that was standard protocol. So I show up um, for my fashion shoot, very dapper, wearing a suit. Uh, not ready for this interview at all. Uh, and they sit me down in an office and they said, hey, uh, answer all these questions to the best of your ability with, that, with whatever resources that you have. And I said, perfect. So they shut the door and they said, and I said, okay, resources. So I pull my iPhone out of my pocket. And every question I answered looking it up on Google. So they come back in, they're like, wow, you know what feline leukemia is? You can name five breeds of dogs. And I'm like, yeah, feline leukemia, it's horrible. And dogs, I love dogs. Here's 15 breeds, I'll write them all down for you. Um, little did I know it was not a volunteer opportunity, it was actually a job interview. Uh, funny thing, you know, and I asked and I said, um, why do you interview volunteers? They're like, we don't, you know, this is for a permanent position as a full-time employee. So I walk out thinking it was a big joke uh, and sure enough, two weeks later, they call me back and offer me a position. So I go to my first day of work uh, and little did I know that my job was going to be to talk to people who were having to give up their pets uh, and also try to find homes for the thousands of animals that were left at a shelter every year. So it was really a culture shock for me. You know, I didn't know that there was, just at that one shelter, 11,000 homeless animals coming in every year. I didn't know that less than half of them only made it out alive. And all the materialistic things that I cared about, clothes, cars, fashion, watches, uh, they didn't really matter anymore, you know? I found that there was a problem in my community that I had no idea about uh, that became my new passion. I uh, tried my best to educate people about pet responsibility, alternative resources of leaving pets at home, uh, but I knew I wanted to do more uh, because you know they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I knew that um, a lot of these people that had to give up their pets, a lot of them were in that situation and there's nothing that you can do, uh, but you could always educate children about pet responsibility. And so I left the shelter at that point and I started my own nonprofit. So I established a 501c3 to do humane education. And so I approached uh, the school district, the city of Sacramento, and I said, hey, I want to teach your kids about animals. I was like, easy, right? They're going to love it. Uh, and they told me, well, that's great, Bobby, but a lot of our kids can't read. And I was like, oh my gosh, another problem that I had no idea about in my own community. So I decided to get crafty and I uh, implemented a program that I had seen a lot of research done around the country where you actually use certified therapy dogs and you do fluency programs with kids. So you would take the dogs to the schools and you have children read books aloud to the dogs to help with their fluency and comprehension. The school district thought I was absolutely crazy, but they gave it a shot. Within eight weeks of my first program, 
the 25 kids that I had saw an increase in their fluency and comprehension by anywhere from 30 to 110%. Some of them were going up two to three grade levels in their reading efficiency, which was to me remarkable. Not only that, they were learning compassion, empathy, they were learning the importance of spaying and neutering, adopting shelter animals. Um, so I don't think it just helped the animals or it just helped the kids, I think it really made for a better community in general. For me, I fell into animal welfare because I stumbled upon a problem I saw and I felt that I was one of the few people that had the resources to be able to make change. And that's what I've been doing. So I love animals, I love kids, I love Sacramento. Uh, I love art, I love social media, I love fashion. Uh, it just so happened that I found my niche here and that's probably why I do what I do.